Welcome friends. If you are viewing this video, you are probably stuck on an accounting topic, accruals and prepayments. Well, my name is Steve Willis. In this 15 minute video, I will set you straight on these concepts. I'll show you a very helpful exam template and we will do a question from the ACCA, Financial Accounting Specimen Exam. We're talking about accruals and prepayments. Let's use a simple example to illustrate these concepts. Let's meet Fred, a sole trader. Fred pays $100 rent per month. And you've probably learned in your studies up till now, when we pay an expense, we debit the expense account, credit cash. So every month we are debiting rent 100 crediting cash so at the end of the year we have debited the expense account twelve hundred dollars and then we close out that expense account with a debit to the PL and a credit to that expense account closing it out ready for the next accounting period If you remember the matching concept in accounting, the matching concept says that we recognize revenue and expenses in the period that they occur rather than when the cash changes hands. And this is the principle behind accruals and prepayments. Let's now modify our simple example. We've got a year end of the 31st of December Fred's rental contract states that he pays three months in advance and he moved into his office on the 1st of June. Let's get started solving this with a handy tool, a timeline. I simply draw a horizontal line. I cut it in half, then I cut it into quarters and then each quarter I cut into three pieces representing months. I start at the end, a D for December, and then I fill in from the beginning with the remaining months. This is a very handy tool if your puzzle is has a year end that's different from the calendar year end. Now, I record my cash payments in my rent expense account. So I debit rent, 300 credit cash, 300, I do it again on the 1st of September, I do it again on the 1st of December. Look at that. So I have paid $900 in rent for this year. However, we can see that 200 of those dollars were a payment for the next fiscal year. Let's check that out in our T account now. So we have paid rent of $900. So we debited rent, 900 credited cash, 900. Now the charge to the P&L will be $100 per month that we used in that period. So we used seven months so the charge to the PL will be seven hundred dollars look at that now we're meeting a situation when the when the left when the debit side is not equal to the credit side so we're going to follow the rule of closing an account so we observe that the debit side is greater than the credit side so we will add up the debit side and we get $900. We carry that over to the credit side and we then park a balancing figure of $200 as a carry forward balance also known as closing. C for closing. Okay, that everybody is a prepayment. We paid more than our charge for the year. We paid extra for 
in the next year, $200. So that closing balance will open up in the next period on the debit column where it belongs. And that is a closing debit balance that becomes the opening debit balance on our expense T account. Guys, think about this. If Fred were to move out of his office on December 31st, and he had a very loose contract, the landlord would owe him that $200. So think about that. When you are owed money, that is a receivable. So a prepayment is similar to a receivable, and it is an asset. It is a current asset. It lives on the debit side. It's a balance sheet account or statement of financial position item. So assets are debits and the, all of that sanity checks with the concepts of accounting that you have learned thus far. Let's modify our scenario. Let's say that Fred moves in on May 1st. Now he pays three months in arrears. He pays after three months, not before. So we can build up our timeline once again in the same manner, splitting our horizontal line in half in quarters, then into months. We add December at the end, and then we load in the, the months from the beginning, January, February, etc. Let's use the same approach we used before on the timeline. We can record where the cash was paid. We moved in on May 1st, so we pay at August 1st, 300. Then we pay on November 1st, 300. And we won't pay again until February 1st in the next year. So look at that. At the end of the year, we've only paid $600. Okay, but we've used eight months worth of rental expense. So let's make a T account to see how this will, will work. So same approach. We debit our expense account, $600. Uh, and the P&L will now get eight months multiplied by $100. So the P&L will be debited $800 credit expense account, $800. Look at that team. Once again, the debit and the credit sides do not balance. I will use the same approach I used before. I will total up the greater side. In this case, it's the credit side, which is $800 bring that over to the debit side, and once again, park a balancing figure of $200 in that gap. Now, that is a carry forward, also known as closing balance. I want to reiterate, that is a closing credit balance. That's one of the strange things about this traditional approach to bookkeeping, is that the closing balances get parked in the opposite side. Let us think about that now. When we reopen our rent expense, that 200 will show up on the right side, the credit side. And look at that. We owe $200. We used two months of rent we didn't pay for. That is just like a payable. Payables are liabilities. Liabilities are credits. So again, this whole system completely dovetails with all the accounting principles we've learned so far. Now that you understand the concepts, let me share with you a really helpful template for your accountancy exam. Guys, very important. By the way, if you've watched it this far and you're finding this video helpful, uh, don't be shy to throw down a like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like more videos like this. Now, about these templates. Guys, what I recommend you do is you write a T account. And all you have to remember 
are two things. When we have an expense T account, an opening debit balance will be a prepayment. Okay, so prepayment goes on the opening debit side of the expense account. And then below that, we know that when we pay an expense, it's debit expense credit cash. So cash is the other item. If you can remember those two things, you can do just about any accruals or prepayments type of question they can throw at you. And this is really cool because the rest of the T accounts work as mirror images. On the other side of a prepayment is an accrual. On the other side of cash is the P&L. And then we know that the closing balances switch sides so that debit prepay shows up closing on the credit side, vice versa for the closing or carry forward accrual. Now, if you remember what I just showed you, you can then on the right side of the expense T account, you can write down income. And as you know, income is a P&L account and it is a credit balance. So we can write down income. And we know that the mirror image works the same. If the prepay, everybody is on the debit side, the prepaid income is on the credit side. That's the landlord's T account, everybody. If you pay the landlord in advance and you move out, the landlord potentially owes you that money. So prepaid revenue is a liability current liability. Cash is on the credit side. And then once again, it is a mirroring activity. So across from the prepay and the cash, we will see the accrual or the deferred income. And below that on the debit side, we will see the charge to the P&L. And you, as you know, the carry forwards then flip over to the other side of the T account, that annoying, quite hard to grasp when you first learn about it thing of those closing balances, plugging that gap as a balancing figure. There we have it, team. Know that template, and you can just build it up knowing expense has two things on the debit side at the top, the prepay and the cash. The rest of it is mirroring. Coming back to the accrued or deferred income, that from the landlord's perspective would be the rent that tenants owe him. So that would be the rent paid in arrears. That would be the rent used but not paid for by his tenants. So that is similar to a receivable. Thus, the deferred income is a current asset living on the debit side of that T account. Now that you understand those principles and that cool template, let us try question 16 from the ACCA financial accounting specimen exam. I have it here on the screen. Why don't you pause the video at this point, try that question on your own, and then come back here and we will solve it together. You can check your work against mine. Let's start at the bottom. What are they asking from us? They're asking us for the amount charged to the P&L for the year ended 30 June. Always important to flag the dates. That's quite important when we are doing financial accounting. And we see the usual suspects here. We see an opening prepayment. Prepayment brought forward. B beginning opening. That's how I remember it. We see the cash paid, 5,400. And then we see a carry forward accrual, accrual, C closing balance. So this is testing your knowledge of accruals and prepayments. So what I do now is I recall that template. And the template, as I mentioned, you just have to remember 
two things about it. An expense account has an opening prepay on the debit side and then the cash paid is right below that. If I can remember those two things, I can then fill out the rest of my template using mirror, mirroring. Across from the prepay is the cruel, across from cash is the P&L, and then flipping on the bottom is the accrual on the debit side and the prepay on the credit side. Now in the question we see three items. We see the prepay, the cash, and the accrual. And we don't need an opening accrual or a closing prepay. So we're only looking for the P&L there. So that would be the balancing figure we are hunting for. Let's now use that in the question itself. We can go back upstairs and we can sketch out a little template or pro forma on scrap paper or you can use a scratch pad and we know that the expense account we have the prepay in the upper debit side so that's the prepay and we know below that is cash below that is a closing accrual across from cash is the P&L now we just plug in the figures the 550 5400 and the 650 and we total the bigger side, the debit side, and that comes to $6,600. And as there is nothing else on the credit side, we know that the charge to the P&L will be that $6,600. Look at that. We found the right answer using a template and the knowledge we just learned. Ladies and gents, I hope that this topic is making a bit more sense now that you've spent 15 minutes on the video. I want to close out looking at this template again. Please make sure you know this for your accountancy exam. Guys, this is Steve signing out. Good luck on your upcoming exam. Bye for now.